Welcome, okay. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. From our BizVision studios in the UK, you're watching the Conscious Matters show on the BBTV network. There's a new wave of leadership sweeping across the world. And here at BizVision, we like to think we're surfing the wave for you to bring you the right and winning thinking. Now, that wave is conscious leadership. I fully believe that the winning business of now and the future will be a conscious business led by a conscious leader. Now, the conscious agenda is deep and wide, but really comes together under planet, people and profits. Today, I want to focus on the people part in my continuing conversation with Tony Walmsley of the Leaders Advisory. Hello again, Tony. Malcolm, it's uh, great to be back. Thanks very much for the invitation. Looking forward to the chat. Um, same, same here. Look, Tony, before we jump into my questions, can you give everyone a brief overview of the Leaders Advisory, what you do and who you do it for? Yeah, so we're a performance and, and profiling business. You specialize in, in helping individuals and teams um, improve performance, which is, you know, aimed at helping businesses solve some of their greatest challenges like engagement, productivity, and well-being. That's, that's probably the essence of what we do. Yeah, and there's a lot of challenges at the moment, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> now, let's focus on conscious leadership and the Planet People and Profits agenda. I want to chat to you about the people element. Do you think leaders are starting to be more human or humane with their people, or does the old ivory tower boss syndrome still substantially exist? I think there's a there's a growing demand for, for that consciousness, but it's, a, it's definitely a work in progress from, from what I've seen. You know, everybody's somewhere along that continuum. You're, you're either a pioneer or an early adopter at one end and, and maybe a Luddite or somebody that's got, <laughs> got, got some barriers to change at, at the other end. Um, you know, the truth is, or my truth is that, that, that people matter. You know, the planet matters and for business, profit matters as well. You know, we can't escape that. But nothing happens without without the people and un understanding the human elements, um, the drives, the motivations, the fears. It, it goes a long way to to that creation of of an optimized culture. Mm. Now, conscious leadership, in our mind, has a wide agenda and it should be learned gradually. But one thing is a deep understanding of the value of a diverse team. You've managed sports teams around the world. How have you seen? diversity work well well there's no doubt in my mind that that that, that diversity is a key contributor to, to optimizing performance you know and, and it's you know it's very topical at the moment if you look at football you know it, it, it's everywhere and rightly so it's a it's it's high on people's agenda to tackle you know inclusion and and diversity and gender and race issues but this fundamentally for me is about it's about individuality. It's about recognition that everybody is unique. Everybody's got a set of gifts that, that they can share with the world, you know, and it's about then giving them the opportunity for those gifts to shine. And I think it's so important right now. Mm, I totally agree. Now, I suspect, though, that technology is increasingly taking the humanity out of HR and especially leadership. And again, especially in these uncertain times when the red pen seems to be decimating teams everywhere. Now, don't get me wrong. Understand, I understand that rationalizing costs may be necessary, but you think that such activity could be done more humanely by, say, conscious leaders? I, I trained in lean, you know, going back a few years now. And I, I love the concept that I, you know, I work with, uh, with Unipad a big logistics and supply chain uh, organization, you know, famed for the Unipart way. And I loved the concept of redeployment, which it was a more, it was a more positive sort of growth minded approach that when, when they sourced improvements in efficiency that technology brings, um, they redeployed people rather than retrench people. So it, 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 it it's interesting. So in, in terms of, you know, taking out the humanity. I think it's folly to be to be led down a path that digital transformation has got all the answers, without considering what the impact is on the people. And, and the interesting thing for me is that, that 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 people are more comfortable with the technology, however fast it's changing, than they are with the complexity of handling the people. And I, I think that's why 
that's why I exist in business is to help balance that equation a little bit. Gotcha. Now, putting aside humanity considerations, today's salespeople are still under pressure to perform and reach targets, especially as companies try to bounce back from the pandemic impact. What do you say to leaders of those salespeople and how can they still reach goals and motivate people, but do it humanely? Well, I love I love this topic. Uh, you know, mo- motivating people is really, I suppose, intrinsically about understanding how people are motivated from within. So that intrinsic, intrinsic stuff. And, and that's about attending. It's about being present. It's about listening for understanding. Uh, you know, it's a myth to think of the sales profession as being full of people of a certain type. You know, it's wrong to assume that, you know, there isn't just one type that makes a successful salesperson. Um, you know, so when, when you, you think when, when you're a manager that thinks that other people, you know, if you're a sales manager that thinks that other salespeople should be like you, then you're missing a big opportunity to tap into lots of other sets of capability that could be adding value to a, to a sales a sales team, especially under the new the new world that we're operating in. Mm, yeah, spot on. Uh, and a worrying thing that I've learned from my interviews with now for going on for 300 leaders since March 2020 is that succession planning is tending to be put on the back burner because of other crises. I suggest, <laughs> I suggest that by doing this, a company may end up in panic promotion and have the wrong people in the wrong position. Do you think I may be right? And what's your thinking on succession planning, especially to ensure a business is fit for the future? Yeah, that's a great question, Malcolm. I, you know, and I, I love the sort of reference to panic. You know, it is confusing. It is chaotic. It is uncertain out there. And, and I think, you know, whether there's, there's that, it's like panic buying, isn't it? It's panic promotion. It's the same kind of same kind of thing or you know if you think of a scale-up company a company that's growing rapidly that need to fill roles really quickly that comes at a cost you know it 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 comes at a cost when i suppose that getting that deeper insight into uh the people and how they align to the roles that you need to be filled is absolutely fundamental the the alternative to that is to let the unconscious bias, um, your personal preferences, and just his, historical performance be the things that inform who who does what. Uh, there's there's a lot more complexity to it than that, and I think the indicators of success um, are there if you know where to look for them. You know, and and a little bit more data and insight to feed those those processes would go a long way to to, to helping people be more successful. Yeah, that's very true. Tony, just before I move on to the next question, I need to remind viewers and listeners of where they can find you. The URL is on the screen behind me for viewers and for listeners. It's www.theleaders, that's L-E-A-D-E-R-S, advisory, A-D-V-I-S-O-R-I-Y dot com, theleadersadvisory.com. Tell me about some of the tools you've developed to uh, deliver your service at the Leaders Advisory. What are they, and why did you feel the need to develop them? Well, I'll just reverse that a little bit. So, if you think about managers being cited as the predominant reason why people quit work, or that twenty percent of the global pop- working population are actively disengaged, that means they're they're not really doing anything to help. It might even be actively working against you then those statistics alone mean there's a high cost of doing nothing. So, so that, that's why I exist, and that's the areas that, that I try and tackle. So the tools that I've got are high-performance uh, reports, high-resolution profiles that, that bring in, insights, human insights to the surface, and they enable people to have different conversations than just about have the targets that we set being reached. Mm. Um, because we're human beings, and we're not linear. We don't measure on on a scale we, we we tend to operate you know coming from the sporting world where there's a a, a results focus and 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 you're under scrutiny for a, for a, a short period of time in business it seems to be that you're under scrutiny all the time and there's not enough attention paid around who we're being rather than just the stuff that we're doing and and that's that that's the thing that i focus on the most 
Mm, that's really important, Tony, especially as news out this week um, by one HR uh, survey company saying that uh, seven, over 70 percent of employees are dissatisfied with their leaders' performance during this uh, pandemic time. Now, in the UK, we face a continuing challenge of pandemic. Uh, now Brexit, whatever that's going to happen, and a disastrous economy, a triple headache for business leaders. Leadership is going to be tougher with many indecisive customers, people changing jobs, and businesses less willing to take risks or even be innovative. How do you see Leaders Advisory helping leaders and their te teams get through this triple whammy? Uh, you know, there's, there's a, I mean, this is the sweet spot for us. If, if I think, you know, if it's a triple whammy, let's look at it in, in, in three different ways. One is uncertainty. You know, we're in a state of uncertainty, but it doesn't take away the problem that needs to be solved. It's just uncertain. So that's about accepting that. And, and, then, and then it's about vision and clarity. You know, we're in this state, we're unsettled, we're uncertain. Okay, so, so then what does good look like from this, from this baseline? And then direct, let's direct, direct our aim towards something meaningful and provide clarity for people as, as to the way forward. That's the first thing. The, the, the second thing I think is I, I don't see it as tough as tougher for leaders personally. It's just different. Now, th those differences are more challenging for some people than others. It can be a problem for people who like things to stay the same. But there's a real sense right now of, OK, we want psychological safety and, and people to be OK with 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 speaking up about challenges. But there's a sense that let, let's deal with what's in front of us. Uh, let's get the problems out. Let's, let's get them down on paper if we have to in, in detail and, and then remove all the things that are just sort of petty and, and focus with great intention on the mo most important things. And, and finally, I would say that people know what good used to look like in the past. And there can be some anxiety about this uncertain future that's ahead. And if we spend any length of time in either of those memories or, or aspirational places, um, we can lose sight of what we're actually supposed to be doing. Mm. And wedged between those, those sorts of bookends is, is the present where we actually need to be uh, in an environment where every individual um, is fully immersed in the things that they love to do. And now that's a complex challenge and helping them get there is, is sort of what I'm really re relishing at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally with you. If you keep focusing on the negative, you'll always be in the negative, won't you? Yeah, yeah. that's why I've always got a half full bottle, you know. Uh, to do, Tony, as we gratefully rush into 2021 and hopefully for many leave the gloom of 2020 behind, what three, uh, three New Year's resolutions do you think the conscious leader should have in his or hers list? Yeah, that's great, isn't it? Um, uh, you know, I've thought about this for, for, for myself, you know, how does it apply to, to me and my business? I, I think take responsibility under all circumstances for the performance of your people, you know, you enable them to become better than they were yesterday. So not in comparison to anybody else, not looking outside at, 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 at how other people are doing it, but to, to understand yourself well enough to know that okay, this is who I am. This is potentially where I can go and then measure yourself against that. So you're incrementally improving every day. And the second thing I think is, is that the culture, and I had a conversation with someone this morning about this, that, that, that culture exists between what, what you wanted to say or what you intended to say and how what you said was understood. So it's in all those nuances in, in the conversation. So in order to connect your people to the culture and vision that your business has got, then it requires the organization to be better at developing uh, conversational behaviors that mean, uh, that mean different, you know, that have more meaning. And, and lastly, I think there's, there's a need to focus on and celebrate. It's like an appreciation of, of the small victories that you get as you're going along. So uh, if, uh, if you if you fail to appreciate just the little small things, then you can start to create a deficit mindset, which sets off this spike. You know, that's, 
that's where, you know, referring back to your previous stats, that's where the engagement starts. Mm. The, hang on a second, you're only ever pointing out the stuff that's going wrong. So, so, so look for the wins and celebrate them. Celebrate them quickly, then, then move on and, and keep aiming for, for where you're going next. Mm. Tony, I can't miss uh, appreciating the terrific uh, input that you've kindly given us there. So just one little co- final commitment for you. Are you coming back in 2021 to chat to viewers? Oh, I'd love to be back. You know, okay. I've, I've started this journey 12 months ago and, and uh, you know, it's, it's rolling along nicely and, and I've got so much to, uh, so much to share and, and, and I'm loving the, the insights that I'm picking up from, from businesses all, all over the world. Excellent. We'll see you, Tony Wonsley, from the Leaders Advisory. Uh, thank you for that. And we'll see you again in 2021. Thanks very much.